Hello! I'm currently making an animated short film in Blender called Stack, and it's about this self-balancing robot who likes to build things. And at some point, this happens. In this tutorial, we are going to create this ball and how its surface warps and displaces the reflections. We will use procedural textures, which are defined mathematically. This means it's highly customizable, doesn't fill up your hard drive, and you can zoom infinitely. First, let's open up Blender version 2.80. Now, we won't need all of this, so press A to select all, X to delete, and Shift A to create. Let's choose Icosphere, and down in the left corner, we can adjust our mesh resolution. Five will define. Press G to move, and by using X, Y, or Z, we can specify our axis and holding Ctrl to snap it to the grid. Let's add our ground plane, and by pressing S, we can scale it up. Now, we need a light source. First, make sure to set your render engine to cycles, because we'll use geometry-based lighting to get some nice-looking ray trace reflections in our shiny surface. So create another regular plane, go to Material, New, and right next to Surface, we can select Emission. Now that we have a material that emits light in our scene, we can set the viewport shading to Rendered and we can toggle the overlay to see what the final render would look like. You might feel that everything looks a little washed out right now, and that's because our background is grey by default. So we can go to the world settings and set the background color to black. Then, let's scale up our light on the x-axis to get more light and softer shadows. Great, now that our scene is set up, we're transitioning into a very important part of this tutorial. We're about to open the Node Editor, which is an extremely powerful workspace that offers an incredible variety of artistic choices. So if you're an artist who wants to learn a new tool today, please pay close attention and I'll try my best to explain how this works. To split the viewport vertically in half, you can go to View, Area, Vertical Split. You can also right click on any border anywhere to make a perpendicular split. Now let's set our editor type to Shader Editor. If we have our light selected, you can see the emission material we assigned earlier has its own node and is connected to the material surface. This makes sense, right? Because it's the surface of the material that emits the light. We can disconnect this node and guess what happens. So as long as you keep this in the render view, everything updates in real time. We can change the color, and we can change the intensity. Now if you have experience using real lighting in photography or cinematography, I have some awesome news for you. Let's use Shift A to create a node called Black Body. This value is actually color temperature measured in Kelvin. So now we can assign a Kelvin temperature to our light and I just think that's really cool. Now it's really cool. Let's set it to 3200 and the emission strength to 5. We're finally ready to set up the material of the ball. If you select the ball, you'll see that there aren't any nodes here. That's because we haven't given it a material yet. So go to Material, click New, and now you'll see this principled material. So this can be a little bit overwhelming and honestly it's a great node with all these features but I don't know how to tell you I feel like we should see other nodes it's I think we should just break it off clean so go to shader glossy connect it and let's set the roughness to zero now you might notice this polygon pattern on the surface here that can be fixed by right clicking on the ball and setting the shading type to smooth 
we now have our ball with a smooth reflective surface. Let's take a look at what textures we can generate procedurally. Here we have a variety of different mathematical ways of generating our texture. Let's start with a Voronoi texture, but nothing happens because it isn't connected to anything. So the question is, where do we connect this? If we connect it to the color input, we can control the reflectivity. If we connect it to roughness, we can specify how much the light will scatter when reflected, which can be really powerful. But instead of controlling how light reacts when hitting the surface, we want to warp and displace the material itself, directly. And now we're getting somewhere. We just need to control the level of influence here, and there's a node specifically designed to do that. The node we're looking for is called Displacement. So take the color data and connect it to the height socket of our displacement node. And then connect these two. Now, by adjusting the displacement scale, we can control the influence of the texture. And that's it. We're done with the boring stuff. You see this input socket here, called Vector. This little guy is going to be your new best friend. He is defining how the entire texture is being mapped onto the object's surface. So right now, this little vector input is expecting to receive just good old vector data. Some location, rotation or scale, just a regular. So what if someone stupid comes around, like us, and with another texture, takes the color data, this complex mathematical mess, and just hands it over to poor little Victor here. It's just so powerful, and I think it's beautiful. The possibilities here are enormous, and you can use whatever texture you want. The final settings I ended up with for my material is a noise texture into a Voronoi texture with these settings. I also used a Fresnel node set to 2, adjusted with a color ramp for a subtle circular gradient in the glossy color. You can download the final material in the description of this video. And I hope you use Blender to make something that you really care about. Okay, now I just have a good thumbnail. Is that what he's doing? Yeah, that's perfect. Because then it's going to be a ball.